Aviation Aircraft is preparing to start flight testing ALICE, its new all-electric regional airliner in the U.S. En route to its U.S. base in Prescott, Arizona, the Israeli startup company brought its full-scale prototype of the nine-seat, all-composite design to the Paris Air Show in June, and announced a double-digit launch order for the $4 million aircraft from U.S. operator Cape Air. Aviation expects the path to FAA Part 23 type certification to take between 24 and 30 months after ALICE achieves its first flight before the end of 2019, allowing for entry into service by the end of 2022. It is said to be the first Part 23 all-electric aircraft and the first with full fly-by-wire controls. The manufacturer, which says it is fully funded through the start of series production, believes that ALICE will clearly establish the business case for using electrically powered aircraft for commercial flights. The speed is 240 knots at 10,000 feet. The plane is going to be certified first as an unpressurized cabin, but the plane is built for pressurization. So we expect about a year after the TC to have an STC for the pressurized version. Uh, pressurized version will go all the way up to 32,000 feet. And at 30,000, we're at 265 knots. So it's a fairly uh, fast aircraft. I would say turboprop performance but the cost of operations is really the, the key selling point here. The Alice is about $200 a flight hour in direct operating cost. That includes everything, the battery reserve, energy, whatever consumables you have, the prop reserve, the, the works. Compared to a turboprop, that's not even 20% of the cost of an hour. Compared to the older, slower pistons, we're still at roughly half or 40% of the cost. It's really a paradigm shift in the way we do the math, in the way these things have their economical viability analyzed. Aviation also believes that ALICE performance characteristics will quickly convince both passengers and pilots that all-electric flying is a force for good. It's going to be amazing to fly for the pilots. A lot of redundancies and also a lot of cool features that you really can't get anywhere else. For example, you can trade efficiency for silence. Because electric motors give you a very, very wide torque band, we can do both RPM control and pitch control on these uh, systems and then spin the props a bit slower, get a quieter, let's say, takeoff or a quieter cruise just by changing the pitch correctly because you're close to a residential area or over something and you want to be more quiet. Another interesting feature for the pilot, especially with this unique tall tail seater, if you will, a lot of people are talking to us about the crosswind effect of what's going to happen with these pushers at the wingtip, what's going to happen with the pusher at the tail. What we can do, because we have those wingtip propellers and because we have this very, very high frequency control of the propulsion system, we can do differential thrust for yaw. So it's not only differential thrust. If you put your foot in, the control surfaces at the tail will move. But the idea is that the computer will take care of your yaw corrections in a way that fits your stage of flight. So when you approach and there is a crosswind, you want to come to a landing, you can do differential thrust and actually compensate for that crosswind without doing a banked approach, without putting your wing into the, into the, into the wind. This is a very, very different way to fly a plane. It feels better for the pilot. It definitely feels better for the passenger that doesn't need to do all sorts of roller coaster maneuvers. And this was really in the heart of what we were trying to design. This plane was built for a smoother, crisper ride for the passenger. Several leading aerospace suppliers are involved in the groundbreaking program, including Honeywell, which is providing the fly-by-wire flight controls, and Bendix King with its AeroView avionics suite. The first Alice prototype is powered by three 260 kilowatt Siemens electric motors fitted with hard cell variable pitch propellers, one on each wingtip and one fitted to the tail. Magnix is offering an alternative motor system for the aircraft. Italy's Magnaghi Aeronautica has provided the landing gear, and France's Carbamon Group produced the lightweight composite airframe. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Also, visit AINonline.com and check out our e-newsletters for all the latest on the aviation industry.